Hi everyone, it's Andy uh, from Team 3061. This is the third installment of a video series provided by the strategy team, just intending to give new members uh, a general overview of Husky Robotics, strategy in particular, and now finally the game that's going to be played in the 2021 season. So officially, um, first is calling the game Game Changers, um, but because of coronavirus, they've chosen to replay uh, last year's game. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna reference it as Infinite Recharge um, throughout this video. Uh, just because that's that's what you know all, all members are familiar with coming from last year. Um, so the first thing I want to do is actually want to run through the reveal video. If you watched uh, some of the previous episodes um, in the series, this is the video that first publishes um, in January. So this is kind of the first taste of the game that you'll see um, come January. So we know approximately what the game is going to look like um, because it's being replayed. Um, but so this is the reveal video from last year that could be changes. So I'm just going to run through this. I'm going to provide commentary. Um, if you just want to watch the video straight through without any of my comments, just uh, go to YouTube, look up Infinite Recharge Reveal um, first, uh, something like that, and you can watch it through. But I'm just going to provide general comments, try to clarify some things, um, and just and just kind of run through real quick. So with that, I'll, I'll escape. Um, a little bit easier to navigate this way. Welcome. To the 2021st robotics competition. Story's a little bit dramatic in the openings. There's a there's a theme to each game. An incoming asteroid shower is aimed at first city. Um, so if you'll see here, uh, it's just to kind of give you a scale of the field. It's about the length of a basketball court. Um, slightly narrower or is about about as wide. Um, and then it has all these these game elements on it, right? So it's it's made of carpet on the field, and then it has game elements on it. So that's just to give you a quick scale of kind of what you're looking at in real life. So this is how your robots are going to start on the field. Um, all three of your alliance members, or two, your two alliance members, as well as yourself, they're going to line up in a preset position on that initiation line. And you're actually going to be controlled. You're lining up um, across the field. So the people you see here, um, these mannequins, are actually controlling the robots on the other side of the field. That's how this year's game works. Droids operate autonomously during the first 15 seconds. An attempt to score power cells into any of their three available power ports. So all points are double in this 15 second autonomous period before regular gameplay starts. So, uh, so those three um, scoring areas you saw, um, the low port, um, which earns two points in autonomous, one in regular gameplay, that large hexagonal opening, um, which earns four points in uh, autonomous and two in regular gameplay, and then that inner port, which is inside that hexagonal opening, six in autonomous, three in regular gameplay. Um, so you can see the levels of difficulty of shooting high, you know, low versus high. Um, so that's kind of the main scoring feature of the game, shooting those balls. These these yellow balls called power cells are about the size of a uh, about the size of a dodgeball, um, a little bit smaller. Drivers then control their droids for two minutes and fifteen seconds of teleoperated time. Power cells are collected from one of the five shoots in the loading bay. Yeah. So that loading bay you just saw, that's where teams are allowed to unload power cells onto the field and into the robot. Um, so there are rules regulating how many power cells a team can hold outside the field at any given time. Um, but that's how you, the, these game pieces, right? These yellow balls are going to be delivered onto the field into your robot. And then driven across the city to be stored in the low, outer, and inner ports. Droids must score the required number of power cells to activate sections of their shield generator, and then either rotate their control panel a specified number of times, or position it to a specific color. Right, so this is the, the second aspect of scoring. The shield generator um, that they were describing is essentially just like a tier that you reach after you score a certain number of points. Um, so after you score a certain number of balls, you're allowed to go to the, the control panel here, this, this multicolored wheel, um, and start scoring that way. So here you'll just have to spin the wheel um, either a certain number of times um, to earn points, or be, um, because there's colors on it, you set it to a specific color, um, So that, as they just described. Um, so the, the RP you see up here, that's a ranking point. If you complete specific tasks or have uh, specific accomplishments, 
um, or score so much, you earn ranking points, which is how you're slotted during qualifying matches, right? So if you win certain matches, uh, you'll earn ranking points. And if you complete various tasks, you'll earn ranking points as well. their shield generator operational alliances are awarded bonus points for a level generator uh, and then this last part just briefly is called the end game um so in the last uh, 30 seconds of the match um you'll teams abandon scoring with the balls and then they race to climb um so we call this climbing they grab onto this bar and they try to raise themselves into the air um if you keep it level um within eight degrees so you keep it from from tipping, um, you earn more points if you keep it level. Um, you don't have to turn turn some points. You can see it's 25 for each climb, and then an additional 15 um, if you can get it to level. So that's uh, the last way you can score um, in the game, and that's it's very point dense. You earn a lot of points for climbing, so that's very important. Switch. The alliance that earns the most points wins the match. Yep. May the force be with us all. Awesome. So I hope that that helped to provide just a, a slight overview of kind of the game. I'm a little bit more in-depth commentary. Like I said, the game manual can, can further clarify. Hi, everyone. I'm Sean, and I'm going to be giving you an introduction to many of the elements of the game, Infinite Recharge, and then also talking about potential changes to the game for next year. So Infinite Recharge has three main scoring and game elements. Power cells are the uh, dodgeball-like spheres that you can shoot into the power port to earn points or deposit into the lower power port. Um, the control panel is the Wheel of Fortune-looking item that is found one per alliance on the edge of the field. And you can spin that to earn points and level up your shield generator. And then the shield generator is the, the mechanism on which you climb at the end of the game to earn even more points. And an important part of infinite recharge is learning about the point density, which is how many points you earn versus how difficult the task is to complete. So the two power cell scoring levels, you have the lower power port and the upper power port, and then the inner power port as well. So the inner power port earns three points, upper earns two, and lower earns one. So that makes upper and inner shots more valuable. So that's a good example of point density. And then also climbing is very valuable because even a climb without leveling the bar earns 25 points, which is the same as you would need. You would need to deposit 25 balls into the lower power port to earn that many points, which is very difficult to do. And then there's also certain protected zones on the field. Um, as you can see here, we have the loading zone down here where alliances are able to pick up power cells. And then the scoring zone directly in front of the power port, which is a safe triangle where alliances can score their power cells safely. And then you also have the trench run which runs under the control panel along the side of the field, which is a safe zone for robots that shoot further and want to cross along the field. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to tune in for the rest of the Husky Robotics training video series. Uh, we'll have lots of great videos about every sub team and every topic that you could possibly need to know about FRC. So yeah, be sure to tune in. Thank you.